Hello, this is Mrs. Dean Brasted, and today we're going to do some of the problems from the Chapter 2, Section 5 assignment on solving for bear. So I'm going to start with um, number 3 here. I'm not going to do every problem, just selected ones here. And let me get my pen. Number 3 says the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism with length L, width W, and height H is V equals L times W times H. So I'm going to start by writing that out. And they want us to solve this formula for W. It's very important that you know what they're trying to solve for, W. That's this variable right here. That means that I want that on one side of the equation by itself. Now it's already on the right side, so that's fine. I can leave it there. But it's being multiplied by L and by H. The opposite of multiplying by L is dividing by L. So I need to divide both sides by L. At the same time, W is also being multiplied by H. You can divide by both of them at the same time. You don't have to do it in two separate steps. So once you divide by L and by H on the right side, there's no more L here. There's no more H here. So you're left with V on the left side over L times H is equal to W. That's what we wanted. We wanted to solve for W. I solve for W. So now I'm ready to move on to the next problem. All right, the next one says, uh, let's see, which one should we do next? Let's do number five. M minus 4N equals 8. Now this isn't saying that M is 8 or N is 8 or anything like this. This is, right here, this is the original formula or equation that you're given. And you need to solve that for M. So that M is only given so that we know what variable we're trying to solve for. So our first thing that we need to do is get rid of the stuff that's next to the M. Now in this case, next to the M is a minus 4N. So I need to add 4N to both sides. So now I'm left with M minus 4N plus 4N. Well, that's just M. And then I have 8 plus 4N. That is not 12N. 8 does not have an N on it. They are not like terms. You just write 8 plus 4N. You can't combine them. Well, I needed to solve for M, and I just did solve for M. All I had to do was add 4N to both sides. Um, let's look at number 7. First of all, in number 6, your first step is going to be yeah, maybe we should do six. <laughs> we'll do the first step. The first step in six says um, f plus four all over g equals six, and we want to solve it for f. If we want to solve it for f, and f is up here as part of a fraction, we can't really do anything with that until after we get rid of this divide by g. Let me rewrite this one over here. So your first step in number six is actually going to be nothing to do with the F. It's going to be getting rid of the divide by G, undoing divide by G, and we do that by multiplying both sides by G. So your first step is to get rid of the division by G by undoing it by multiplying. And those G's then would cancel. And now you're left with an easier thing to work with, F plus four is equal to six G. Now I'm not done with that one. You still you're trying to solve for f, so you have to undo the plus four. But let's move on to number seven. Number seven says solve b plus c equals ten divided by a or ten over a for a. So it's kind of similar to number six in that the variable that we're looking for a is part of a fraction. This time it's the denominator of the fraction. So our first step is going to be to get rid of that fraction or that division by doing the opposite. So dividing by a, the opposite of that is multiplying both sides by a. When you multiply the left side by a, you have to multiply everything on the left by a. So we need a parentheses there. Um, on the right side, the times a divided by a, that cancels. So we're left with here a parentheses b plus c is equal to 10. Now, some people would automatically multiply that through a distributive property and say AB plus AC, but we're trying to solve for A, remember. Here's our A. It's being multiplied by something. Now, it's being multiplied by something in parentheses, but that doesn't matter. We're still multiplying by a quantity, B plus C, and I want to undo that multiplication, and I would do that by dividing. 
So I'm going to divide both sides by b plus c. That leaves me then with, let's cancel out what we can cancel, the b plus c's cancel because we divided by that whole quantity. So we're left with, on the left side, a equals, and then on the right side, we can't actually divide any of that, so we just rewrite 10 over b plus c. All right, I think I'll let you do number 14 on your own. You would start by adding 360 to both sides, so you'd get s plus 360 equals 180 times, whoops, that moved, 180 times n, and then you would have to divide by something. When you divide, you'll divide the whole thing, so make sure you put a line under the whole thing. Now, if you're doing this with uh, typing in Word, you would type, maybe put parentheses around the s plus 360, and then the division symbol, and then whatever you divide by to be equal to your next thing. All right, let's look at the next page here. Um, number 15, let's look at 15. In 15, we're trying to solve for x, and it says x divided by 5 minus g is equal to a. Now, on the last couple of problems, the whole term was a fraction, so we started by um, on doing the division, on doing the bottom part. But in this one, we have a fraction, x over 5, minus g equals a. The first thing I want to do in this one is the minus g part. I would want to undo that by adding g to both sides. So now I have x over 5 equals a plus g. And then you can probably figure out that the next step would be to undo the division by 5. So you're going to multiply to undo the division. Now remember that on this side you have to put parentheses around that when you those are going to cancel somehow. So x equals, you could either leave it as 5 times a plus g, or you could do the distributive property and leave it as 5a plus 5g. This is all number 15 still. Let me give myself a little more room here. Ah, where did it go? There we are. Okay, so on 16... We would multiply both sides by 2, perhaps, to get rid of the fraction. That would be one way to start. So I start with a equals 1 half b h. If I multiply both sides by 2, I'd have 2 times a equals just b times h, because the 2s would cancel. And then I would just have to divide by h to get b by itself. So that one's almost done. Mm, let's see, which other one should we look at here? Let's look at 18. We want to solve for n right here. So we are going to subtract 1 from both sides first. Now a minus 1, we just leave that as an expression, is equal to 3n. And then I want to solve that for n. So I have to divide everything by 3. So my answer would be a minus 1 divided by 3 is equal to n. And then let's just do one of these multiple choice ones. Let's do number 36. It says, which of the following is the correct method for solving 2a minus 5b equals 10 for b? Okay, if I want to solve for b, I need to get rid of what's being added or subtracted to it. So I would first subtract 2a from both sides. Does that have, that's this says, okay. And then I would have negative 5b. You don't actually have to do the steps, but let's just see what I would do next. Then I would divide everything by negative 5. So J says subtract 2A from both sides. Yep, did that. Then divide both sides by negative 5. Yep, did that. So that's definitely the right answer for that one. And I think that'll give you a good idea on how to do the rest of these problems. Please come to my office hours. Send me an email if you have questions on the ones I didn't do, and we'll work them out together. All right, thank you very much.